dry clothing and cigarettes are passed around. The tradition of the three is honorably and punctiliously respected. These men are the cream of the German Navy. They just can't believe that their ship has been captured and by members of a decadent democracy. At last, the Pillsbury comes alongside and passes a line to the boarding party. A neat bit of seamanship. But watch out, that sub is still as dangerous as a wounded shark. She swings into the Pillsbury, and her bow flippers rip a long, underwater gash in the DE's thin plates, flooding two main compartments clear up to the waterline. The destroyer has to cut loose and back clear. The Pillsbury radios. Sub says she has to be towed to stay afloat, but we don't think a destroyer can do it. So the Guadalcanal heads over and says on the TBS, destroyer stand clear. I am going to take her in tow myself. Now we'll see whether this aviator skipper can handle the ship. It's a ticklish job hooking a flat top to a sinking sub on the high seas and in the middle of the Atlantic U-boat lanes. Look how far down she is. They've closed the hatch to keep the swells from pouring down on the boys working inside. If she goes down now, they all go down with her. Let's get that line out. There it goes, the messenger line with the big tow line at the end of it. This is a job to test the metal of veteran seamen and four out of five of those boys on the sub's forecastle are green. But there is no fumbling. is made fast, and the anxious skipper heaves a sigh of relief as the sub makes way and rises in the water. She is safe again, for the time being, and under a new flag. The task group forms up, and on orders from the Navy Department, heads for Bermuda. A grueling 2,500-mile haul with a riddled, waterlogged U-boat in tow. Normal flight operations are resumed and carried on day and night, despite the greatly reduced speed of the Guadalcanal. At times, there are only 15 knots of wind across the flight deck, and it's axiomatic that a flyer has to have 25 knots to land on a baby flat top. But these pilots land anyway, and without an accident. The prisoners are transferred from the overcrowded destroyer to the carrier. The one in the stretcher is Oberleutnant Jersey Herr Lang, captain of the U-505. The first man out of the conning tower. He was instantly blown overboard by a shell. During the voyage, they're brought on deck for exercises. and a thorough salt shower. On the 7th of June, the fleet tug of Naki joins up, and the tow is transferred from the Guadalcanal. Now comes the most anxious moment of the cruise. As she loses way, Junior, as the crew have christened the sub, sinks lower and lower in the water. 
The salvage party works desperately to take all movable weights out of the U-boat. Then, as the transfer is completed and the Abnaki gets underway, the clutches on the sub's engines are released and her propellers recharge her batteries. With power aboard, her pumps work once more and her tanks are blown out. Now she rides again at full surface trim. On June 19th, the U-505 was towed into Bermuda and there remains as a prize of war, one less wolf to hunt with the pack.